Good to see you all. So I was invited here with the prompt of uh, writing a poem about being human, uh, which is quite the request uh, for those of you who don't have any working poets in your lives. And I, uh, I racked my brain for, I don't know, a line, a metaphor, a symbol that could carry the poem home. And then something quite miraculous happened three weeks ago here in Cambridge. My, uh, my daughter was born, June. And, uh, oh wow, okay, thank you. That's great, and an applause for human life. That's fantastic. Um, and it just sort of hit me all of a sudden. Well, many things hit me. One, that I wasn't gonna get any sleep for a very long time. But it also hit me that the answer was right in front of me. And so every single day since she's been born, I've been thinking about what kind of traditions I wanna pass down to this uh, new small human being who's been entrusted to my care. And thus, of course, I've been thinking about my own father and the traditions he passed down to me one of which was watching Star Trek. So this is a poem about Star Trek. And also Mae Jemison, who was the first black woman in space and also a guest on Star Trek. Uh, my father is 75 years old. He uh, integrated his high school in Birmingham, Alabama, and thus grew up, I think, with a very specific version of being human uh, beamed onto him, but instead chose to instill in his children a much more transcendent, beautiful vision of what it might mean to be a human being. And so this is for him, and this is an ode to Mae Jemison. It was perhaps our oldest ritual, my father and I watching Star Trek on the living room floor, quiet as calculation, my small frame beside his own, like an image in its draft. We studied any and all variations of this show we loved like no other. Voyager, Deep Space Nine, The Next Generation, comparing each version to its ancestor only once it had run its course. I saw myself everywhere. Data, Worf, Geordi LaForge, scientists and warriors, interstellar adventurers in every form you could imagine, all personalities welcome, central to the mission of the Starship Enterprise, my boyhood eyes aglow as I dreamt of darting through the infinite blackness of the great beyond, smooth as a blade, even in hyperdrive, me and my intrepid crew cruising at light speed toward the promise of another life. Pop never explained the tradition, but the call to see that story unfolding was its own inheritance, a journey through outer galaxies as it was through his own mind. The stillness in that room, no issue for me, who knew even then that quiet had its own texture and richness, that my father was born in Alabama in the 1940s, had always been this way, a man who spoke with action, a look in his eyes that could level a room or else lift it into orbit. Over the years, he would teach me many names, Benjamin Banneker, Louis H. Latimer, Mary McLeod Bethune, narrators of our heroic human drama, George Washington Carver, Mae Jemison, who I would later learn was born in Alabama just like Pop and loves Star Trek II and was the first black woman to reach outer space and the first real astronaut to ever go on the show, the next generation to be exact, at the invitation of LeVar Burton, who was already a hero in our household based on the power of reading Rainbow alone. But this was another level, this woman who had held an audience with the moon, seen the other side of the atmosphere that held us here, this dreamer of a human civilization on Mars this teacher, this healer, this author of children's books and once distant goals made real for generations of us, told we would inherit nothing and learn to love that absence. Instead, Dr. Jemison said, the very cosmos could belong to us. The darkness of our hair, our skin, our eyes was shared with that shimmering infinitude, that endless breath, the possibility that we too might one day take flight, achieve the weightlessness we had only felt in dreams, or heard when we heard Stevie Wonder sing, or saw on TV in briefest flashes of stars, millions of miles beyond our own, but more palpable now, so close you could almost grasp them there, almost hold them in your palm like a promise. Thank you. <laughs> 